Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk further about dual batteries and installations of a fixed dual as opposed to a portable dual uh, installation. So you would have heard us talk about a grab and go solution for a dual battery. So that's basically you have a dual battery like we've got here, the V6, which is portable. So it's 14 kilograms, you can put it in at the vehicle. You might put it in your friend's car and you want to be able to charge it. So how can you do that without wiring something hardwired into the vehicle on the spot? So what we would do is you would use a, a second DC, which you would have seen before, but we'll have a closer look. So these are 5 and 10 amp options. So the way it works is if this is a 5 amp option, which it is, you plug that into the SIGA socket, and that'll convert it to a stable 12, uh, 12, sorry, 14.6 charge for the prismatic. So that there will draw about 7.5 amps because it steps up the voltage. So if you've got a 10 amp socket in your car, the 5 amp is suitable, and it'll give your battery a decent charge at that uh, voltage profile. So if you're running a 40 litre, 50 litre fridge, it's going to put it basically in pretty much what the fridge is taken out while the car is driving. So it does give you a charge. You might have a solar panel at site, that's fine. The V6 must have a regulator charge, so it must have a regulator between a solar panel and the, uh, the V6 battery. So that is a portable solution. Plug in the sticker socket and go. If you take the 10 amp option of these, looks exactly the same, but it has a 10 amp module here, DC, DC, you need to have at least a 15 to 20 amp SIGA socket in your vehicle. Okay, a number of vehicles do have them. And the reason I say that is, is you might say, well, that's 10 amp drawing. Yes, that's going to give you 10 amp into the, the battery and regulate it. But to get that to 10 amp, it's going to draw more out. So it might draw 12 and a half, 13 amp. And if you've got a 10 amp in your vehicle, it's going to get hot, could melt the actual SIGA socket. So make sure it's at least 15 to 20 amp. Um, and then you can get one of these with a 10 amp. And that's it. You can hardwire these at 5 and 10 amp if you want to, but that's just a portable solution that you can actually stick on here. You would have seen them before on other units. You can stick that there, plug that into the input of the, um, the Nomad, and then plug that into your vehicle, and you've got a portable solution, and that will regulate the charge to the V6. Now, we're going to talk about the dual, full dual installation where you've got a hardwired solution. Now, we're going to be doing that uh, today in a 40-something degree heat in the van that we've been uh, fitting out. And that's going to be with 40 amp DC DC. So that is going to the other spectrum, which is running a heavy duty. And this has been provided to us by Batteries WA, which is uh, a Trident product, Matson. And this is the 40 amp option that does have a solar input. Now, the great thing about these with the solar input is it'll do everything for you. So you can have a solar solution um, and uh, you can have a DC solution at the same time. So with these guys here, and if I just pull it out of the box, you can run this in your vehicle and hardwire it in. So the way it looks is like this. And it's quite small, okay? The 20 amp is the same size. And on the end here, you'll see it's got different profiles. So it'll run uh, nylon, it'll run through gel, calcium, um, lead acid, and so on. The great thing is that if you've got this in the vehicle and your friend's battery's flat, you can just change the chemistry setting and charge there. So you've got an output here. Uh, where are we? got an output here. It's going to go to the battery and then you can set the profile. So that can also run this here at 40 amp. That is a 40 amp and then you've got a solar input here. So on the top of this band, we're probably going to be running about 450 to 500 watts of solar panel um, with this here and that's, a that's going to regulate it at 40 amp. Sorry, so basically if you're driving the vehicle, it's going to charge at 40 amp and if you've got solar up there with 500 watt, on a sunny day, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get up to uh, 40 amp. So you're probably never going to run those flat unless you park in a cave. So that's a solar input, and then you've got the vehicle input, uh, which is the input that you see from here, um, and that will connect to the vehicle. What I will point out is that we're going to be installing cable from the crank battery that will come through to this, and what it will be is around a 70 amp cable rating. So make sure you rate the cabling well and truly um, as it should be, and it's actually in the box the instructions to what you should rate at least, at least 70 amp to run to these quite safely. It is a 50 amp Anderson you can connect to, um, but as long as you've got that connected from the crank, you'll be fine. And you can also fuse it as well from the crank to this, just to be safe. And you should anyway uh, fuse between the crank and this. This has a built-in VSR or voltage sensitive relay, and that will detect when the battery on your crank is running down in power as voltage. That's when your car is off. So the car, turn the car off, the voltage comes down, this detects the voltage drop, and disconnects it from the secondary battery, which is your auxiliary or your dual. And that's basically what a VSR does. So this does everything for you. So it regulates everything at 40 amp, it takes a solar, it takes all the guessing out of it, and it's a very simple unit, and there's no complexity to it. Connect to the crank with a fuse, 
connect to the battery and away you go. The only thing I'll point out and you have to be aware of, uh, this is a, a wire that can go to the ignition. Now, I haven't looked into the vehicle yet where it's got a smart alternator. Now, if it has a smart alternator, it may be necessary to run this optional blue ignition wire through and back to the ignition. And then when you turn the ignition on, the unit detects ignition's on, okay? And then the unit will start to charge because the smart alternators get around these and this basically will detect it and get rid of that any issue you have with that. So we're gonna install it and see how it goes. Um, and then if we've got to connect that ignition wire, then we will. Um, and this will be connected up in the back of the van, pretty much close to this, and it'll be in the coolness of the back of the van, behind the seats of the vehicle. And there's probably going to be about a meter and a half only of cable between the crank battery and the DC. DC. We will be connecting up two fridges, so two 52 litre fridges will be running off it, and then the inverter and all the rest of it. We won't be doing that today, we're gonna to try and get this installed, um, and just to get the charging side of things done, and then uh, we'll see how we go from there. So we're gonna add this to the tutorial, but just, just give you a heads up on portable dual setups, and traditional, uh, I guess your purest dual battery setups. That's the difference, okay? So a dual battery, the purest will look at it as needs to be hardwired in the vehicle, uh, would be a, a crank battery to VSR, to DC-DC to battery, or in this case here, VSR is included, so it's crank battery to this unit, to the battery, and just fuse it in between uh, the crank battery and this. So we'll uh, let you know how we go. We'll uh, put some pictures up, some more uh, video once we've got that done.